man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Back again with another video, y'all, man. Woo! Today, I am bringing Malice at the Palace, man. Pistons versus the Pacers in 2004. Now, y'all know this is probably the most, uh, I think it is the craziest moment, like, in basketball. Um, you had, you know, uh, players fighting fans. Uh, I, th I just think that's that's overboard. I mean, it was a period of time in my life where our team was fighting, like, the referees and the fans and stuff like that, too. That was probably one of the craziest moments. But, uh, <laughs> man, hey, make sure I smash the like button for me right now, man. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Join the Patreon, man. And, hey, let's get right into this crazy night. <laughs> Good balance scoring. Now, Chester 24, O'Neal had 20, Crozier 15, Tinsley 13, and Jackson with 12. All five starters in double figures. But the Patriots have played a very intelligent game tonight. Then Wallace is fouled, and Wallace did. Oh, Wallace right at our chest. This has potential to be serious if they don't get between. Wallace upset. Players trying to hold each other off. Steven Jackson on the Wallace trying to be peacemaker. Now Jackson yelling. Wallace still going. You need the coaches in there to get him away. Jackson Steven, yeah. challenging Derek Coleman. Somebody could just get Jackson out of there. Look how they just, man. He over here squaring up with him. And trying to keep the peace. But it started after our chest with a hard foul on Wallace after he got behind him. And then Ben Wallace came over with the shot. So where where did it go wrong at? And an ugly way for this one to wind down. Hold on. Totally uncalled for. I want to see the foul again because it appeared Wallace was past him and our chest shoved him. And that's what Wallace took exception to, but you still can't react that way. You've got to let it go. That's not that hard of a foul. Yeah, he overreacted. Ooh. Yeah, that was tough. He was. He definitely would have got one, right? Yeah. I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> They need to somehow find a way to get this game over with. As Man. As possible. The problem is, if Wallace is ejected, I'm not sure, he'd have to walk past the pace of bench to go. Now our test has jumped over the scorer's table and is trying to get down to the bench. Our test is in the stands. Oh, this is awful. Fans are getting involved. Steven Jackson's in the fans. <laughs> is so, it's, uh, so, so, wait. Okay, so do anybody know, like, Okay, so everybody on 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 the court, you know what I'm saying, was you know, was still butting heads but nobody was fighting. What made Ron Artest, you know, aka Metal World Peace, run up there and, you know, start beating up the fans? And Steven Jackson following right with him. What like <laughs> man. They need to somehow find a way to get this game over with as quickly as possible. The problem is if Wallace Look, he was right there. Oh, okay. He threw a cup. He said, what? Pop. Somebody threw some water. Oh, my goodness. Dude. The security trying to somehow restore order. Fans and players are going out, and the players trying to help each other out. This is a disgrace. That is tough. <laughs> Bro. Because the fans are coming by. Oh, what a sad scene here at the palace. And now another fight's breaking out in front of the Pistons bench. It's a, it's a fan on the court. This is very, very dangerous. Fans are throwing cups with liquid in them now onto the court. Toronto Test has a look in his eye that's very scary right now. Mm. 
This is a crazy moment, bro. Throwing bottles. They're trying to get the Pacers to go back to the locker room. What was maybe you could call it a hard foul at best has turned into a just a, an ugly, ugly scene. Chuck Person. If this was, I think they're going to call this game off, and that should be the, the outcome is definitely decided. You have these ridiculous fans trying to go at the players and now throwing. Somebody could really get hurt. This is man, no deal. This right here, man, was a was a, a a a crazy moment. I'm trying to see. Um, so when they started fighting, where I'm at, three fifty three. They started. Oh, I mean, it was it was almost over anyway. It was forty five seconds in the fourth. Okay, because I'm thinking that you know, they caught it off, like you know, way you know, way before the fourth, you know. So, and I think. Let me go. I'm trying to. I'm trying to go to the, uh, like you know, suspensions or the fines and stuff like that because I actually forgot. Um, but I know every, everybody. Ha if you're a basketball player, bro, you have to know this. Like you know, this is literally. It's just something you have to know. Like this is the craziest fight, the create the worst night in NBA history. You know. Um, David Stern suspended Artest for the remainder of the season. Jackson got 30 games. O'Neal, 25. Mm. So did anybody get fined, though? So somebody. I'm trying to see. I don't know. Bottles from the stands. The Pacers have all gone back. In toward the locker room, and they're getting thrown a lot of debris, and they're still not all the way through. And for some reason, one of the they hold Austin Crozier out, they won't want to get him under the tunnel because they're afraid for his safety. They're pouring liquid over. What a disgrace we're showing from the Pistons fans here. Tough. The players just have to get out of there. Get back to the locker room and forget about it. But I can say that this is when like basketball was like good, bro. Like, man, like, you know, it was still it was still more physical. You know, uh, I think it stopped my my opinion personally, I think it stopped being physical, man. Maybe after the Spurs, you know, stopped going to, uh, you know, the finals. I think that's when everything just got soft. The game has been called. The official announcement has been made. The game has been called, which was the right call. The outcome, obviously, is over. And players, <laughs> like, man, you let me go? I'm good. I blame Ben Wallace, man. It all started with a foul. Ron Artest with a foul. But Ben Wallace team was too hard. As you see the Pacers going underneath the tunnel trying to cover their heads. You can see the debris, some of it being aimed at them. And a lot of it you can't see that's just missing wildly. The security did this is just imagine you being there though you know what I'm saying before there was enough security around let's go to Jim Gray you actually being there man Mike and Bill I was your kids there next to Ron Artest when he was laying down before he went into the stands a fan came and threw a beer and a bottle on him from point blank range when he got hit by that he erupted he knew exactly who it was and he jumped right out after him. The fan got in very close proximity, and that's what triggered Ron Artest, who had been lying down, even after Ben Wallace had thrown a towel at him. That's what triggered this, Mike. I was standing within a couple of feet of him. Uh, that's what triggered the big roll in the stand. That's crazy. What just triggered the entire incident. Crazy. Artest with a foul that he should have let go. He now, if this, if this happened like nowadays, if this happened now, bro, people are getting fined. Millions, maybe. 
you know, uh, if this happened now, and I don't think teammates are actually, you know, ride for their teammates how, how these guys was, you know, I don't think so. Certainly no winners in this circumstance at all. He, he ran away. <laughs> When you're a player and the fans come at you, either physically or verbally, but you have to restrain yourself. You just can't respond to Nuts. it. Nuts. There are so many bottles and cups thrown. He hopped over there. <laughs> After which Jim Gray <gasps> Look how he hopped over there, there boy. Security around at the time, and it was they knocking over all that equipment. equipment. It's gone. And it had seemed the whole thing had calmed down. Here's your man O'Neal. <laughs> Somebody put <laughs> He pushed him out. He said, hey, get off of me. Look at that. Oh, my God. He pushed him. That might be his coach, bro. Look at him. He's like, man. It seemed the whole thing had calmed down. <laughs> Pew. <When that> <laughs> Got right them right together. And another incident for Ron Artest. So unfortunate. And again, the Wow. Fan Hopefully, security is able to get the fan, and he'll receive proper punishment. But the overreaction. What is they doing still? That was Larry Brown who tried to make an announcement to the fans. So upset with what happened. And the Pistons have some great fans, but a lot of them tonight were an absolute Man. disgrace. The ones throwing things and getting involved. Thank you, the final score was the game canceled before the time had run out. Pacers defeat the Pistons with a very... Alex joins John Saunders in our ESPN studio. Nice. Double header. In case you missed it, we're going to show you everything That's again. Stephen a. It started with 45 seconds left. Now, at the end of the game, I called the Detroit fans a bunch of punks. After <laughs> further review, I still think they are. Although not all the fans, but those that were involved in this, those that came on to the four guys, and it escalated when the fans get involved. No, there's no question. And one thing that people don't understand, when you're involved in a rivalry like this where the emotions are running at an all-time high, you have adrenaline flowing, and especially when fans was are it, the ones who... Was it actually him, though? Like, just imagine if he didn't, if that fan actually didn't throw that. Because he, he looked, like, looked like he was saying something, I don't know, you know, before, you know, Artez actually got to him. Looked like he was saying something. The emotions are running at an all-time high. You have adrenaline flowing. And especially when fans are the ones who oh, hold on, wait, because it looked like he had a drink in his hand. Hold on. Understand. When you're involved in a rivalry like this where the emotions are running at an all-time high, you have adrenaline flowing. And especially when fans oh. are the ones who instigate these types of altercation. A player, in essence, is looking for an what? opportunity because they've dealt with so much ridicule from these fans. <laughs> the, the racial slurs, I mean, throwing things. It's it's ridiculous. And in, at that point, oftentimes, you just lose control of emotion. And you're going to hear people talk about <laughs> players having to show restraint, this, that, and the other. You know, most people, the average person on the street. Oh, okay. I I ain't never seen this this this. This second part, like him actually coming back on the floor and somebody run up on him again, he said, what? Hmm, hit him again. The racial slurs, I mean, throwing things, it's it's ridiculous. And in, at that point, at oftentimes that. you just lose control of emotion. And you're going to hear people Pop. talk about players having to show Pop. restraint, this, that, and the other. You know, most people, the average Ooh, person on the Pop. street, they wouldn't wait, even show wait. the kind of restraint that players do. Just Hold on, hold on. Is this, is this a dude in a suit? Hold on. That's the dude in the suit swinging too. Hold on, oh, who who is that who swung? Down the other, you know, most people, look, look, the average person pop. on the street, they wouldn't even show who the kind that? of that players Him do. Right just here. listening to the heckling and abuse that you take in the course of the game as a professional athlete. But we understand that's part of the territory. We understand that kind of comes with it. But now, when you cross the line and you physically throw an object or physically touch a player, all bets are off. Then players have a right to protect themselves, and nobody's going to show that kind of superhuman restraint. Any person would have done the same thing around our test in that well, situation. Well, we all absolutely understand that, and it's going to be real interesting to see how the league handles this. 
this. You know Bennett Wallace is going to get a couple of game suspension because he touched Ron Artest. You know Ron Artest is going to get suspended because he went into the stands. You know Steven Jackson is going to get suspended because he threw a punch. The question is, will those Indiana Pacers deserve to be suspended? That is the question right now. It's going to be real interesting to see how the league handles it and how the Players Association comes to the defense of their players because I absolutely believe they will, and hopefully the NBA will do so as well. Rick Carlisle actually said that he felt he was fighting for his life. And again, you point out that there's 12 players, there's a coaching staff of four or five. There are guys that are out there protecting the team. Stephen A. Smith, you just talked to Rick Carlisle. What do you have to say? I spoke to Rick Carlisle five minutes ago. He says he's completely standing by his players. He does not believe that they were wrong. He did preface it by saying he did not see the incident, but during the game there was stuff going on that he wasn't pleased with from Detroit's side. It's not just the team, but it's fans. And certainly from the stuff that he witnessed, he is yeah. standing by his players. Now, what y'all think? Do y'all think that, uh, you know, those guys should have got suspended? Me personally? No. Uh-uh. I don't think they should have got suspended because, like, even the situation, like, that actually between the, the, the two teams and the players, you know, it was kind of contained. Like, after that situation, you know, after Wallace uh, shoved our test, I mean, they still was, you know, yapping maybe, but no punches were thrown, like, at all. Um, then you see a fan just so happen to throw a drink on a player, and then it escalated. You know, I feel like, nah, you know, mm -mm. It's 100% in this, in this entire fiasco. And I would say so that we would all agree based on what we said. We're not justifying. We're saying they should have gone into the stands. But the fans are the ones who escalated this. A guy who was courtside all night long with more insight, Jim Gray. Well, John, it was just a real ugly scene, as all of you guys have said. Jim and Rick Gray? Carlisle did say in that interview with me oh, wow. that he was fighting for his life. I was standing right next to Ron Artest. And he was just laying down on the bench. Ben Wallace had thrown a towel in his face. He really didn't react at that. See? He was trying to stay out of the mix. And then all of a sudden, it appeared to me that it's a cup or a bottle. A blue bottle came in. And it doused him. And he jumped up and he went out after. Now, he misses the guy. The guy who throws it's the guy in the hat right there. But he's not the guy that he went out, goes after. Uh, Mark. see, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, a little, 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 I was right. He said, he said a guy in the hat. He went out after. Now, he misses the guy. The guy who throws it's the guy in the hat right there. But he's not the guy that he went out, goes after. And our test was very calm. He was talking on the oh, radio wow. with Mark Boyle and the local radio. He had put the headset on. So the incident had basically gotten all calmed down. There you see Jackson come in, and now it just gets totally out of control. So is the dude and in the it's hat. continues Aww. to spill over. Rick Mahorn, uh, one of the former bad boys, now a radio announcer for the Pistons. You see him there on the right in the yellow shirt. Big Rick Mahorn did a great job. But then this fan who starts it all with, with throwing it hit our test in the head twice. And then there was another fan right here, big gentleman on the left in the gray shirt. He just cold cocks Jones and... Uh, that just uh, that man had a credential on too. Uh, I spoke to Tom Wilson, and Tom Wilson feels that there uh, was plenty of security in the house. Uh, John, everybody comes through here, through a megatometer, and they're yeah. also hand searched. So uh, we also had some chairs being thrown. I, I spoke to Ron Artest as he left. He told me he was okay. He was very calm. Uh, he said, "I really can't talk about it. The police are letting me leave right now." Here we see the chair incident coming through, and this prompted wow. the police to get out their pepper spray. And Jermaine O'Neal avoided that chair, but you're going to see some pepper spray come in here. Mm. Anyway, our test said that he was okay. He felt that it was self-defense, and he really didn't want to say anything else. Now, yeah. there had been some reports that the Pacers were not allowed to leave Detroit. They are being allowed by the police to leave Detroit. There will be no arrests tonight. They will investigate further. Ron Gerritsen sent a message through Dana Jamison, the NBA representative here. And uh, as you see, all of this continuing... And it just continued to be real ugly, fellas. It was just a, a horrible scene here. He tried Quite to get over there. And uh, Ron Garrettson said he called the game. There was just no reason to bring anybody else out here on the floor anymore. And he said the bench area is the bench area. It's crazy. And uh, if, if you go by that, there are a few guys in the bench area, but there's going to be an awful lot of suspensions if they follow the letter of that. Um, Mark Boyle, the play-by-play uh, -play man for... The Pacers, he said, look at this right Pop. here, this fan came onto the court, Pop. and then he gets that hit even crazy. harder by Jermaine O'Neal a moment later. John, we could go through this, there's an awful lot of tape, but... Uh, oh, man. Yeah.
<laughs> All right, I'm gonna go ahead and edit that, y'all, man. That video was super long, but man, <laughs> this is my first time actually watching it, you know, this long. But of course, me being a basketball player and wanting to the NBA, you know, we, everybody has to, you know, you have to have heard about this situation. You have to. I don't care. I don't care who you is, man. This was the craziest night. Um, now they really went in depth for me, you know, some stuff that I don't know. Like uh, Artest coming back up on the floor and fighting war fans. I didn't know that, you know. But uh, I didn't know what coaches was actually fighting, too. I think he was a coach because he had a suit on. Or I know that he was in the staff. That's all I know. Um, I wonder if he got anything, you know, because he definitely threw a punch. But, uh, man, let me know how y'all feel, man. Uh, I feel crazy, and uh, I'm I'm thankful and happy that y'all want me to react to more basketball. You know, stuff that I actually enjoy and love to watch, man. And, uh, man. Uh, thank y'all so much, man. Let me know what other basketball videos I want me to react to. Put it in the comment section right now. Make sure I smash that like button for me right now, man. Subscribe to the channel, and hey, to the next reaction. We out.